Hi everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar on Soothing Your AP Pain Points, hosted by Bass Business Solutions in partnerships with Quadient. My name is Amanda DeFlorio, and I am part of the marketing team at Bass. I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules before the webinar begins. All attendees will be muted during the duration of the webinar. If you have a question, please type it in the chat or question box. We will answer the questions at the appropriate time. Please ensure your headphones are plugged in and the volume is turned up on your computer. If you have any technical issues, please write it in the chat box and we will do our best to assist you. Now, I would like to introduce our webinar presenter today, Bass's own account manager, Dan Cannell. Cannell. Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Much appreciated. Thank you, Amanda, for the introduction. Um, looking forward to talking to you today. Some of you are on the West Coast, so it might be early morning, and those on the East Coast, uh, happy afternoon, if you will. Uh, today's focus uh, will be uh, on soothing your AP pain with Sage AP Automation. We're going to explore some of the most common pain points in accounts payable. Then we're going to show you a quick demo of the Sage AP Automation um, setup and explore how Quadiant's great features act as a remedy to those aches and pains. Um, so who is Bass? Who are we? Uh, some of you know me in terms of working as your account manager on many projects and such. Um, and with Quadiant, we've got a great value proposition that we are going to be exploring today. We've worked with Quadiant. You may have seen us at Bass Connect in regards to some of the demos that we've done previously or even other webinars that we've done. So we've got great success stories in regards to our partnership with Quadiant. Uh, and today we're going to explore some of those great um, value propositions, if you will, in regards to how this can benefit your company. Um, as part of the process, we have three pillars that help us drive value proposition. Um, they are methodology, risk assessment, and change management. Those that work with us know that we really dive into your company. We look to see in terms of how we can improve your processes, uh, and we provide you every detail. So there's no cost up front when you're working with us and Quadiant uh, to explore AP automation. We provide you an SOW, we give you demos, we give you everything that you guys need to make a firm decision that this is the right setup for your company. Um, so that's something that in par partnership with Quadiant, um, the process is very smooth. Uh, we take a look again in terms of what drives your business today and how we can take you to that next step. And as part of that, of course, we're, we're taking a look in terms of um, how we can get you, um, you know, the, the processes that you're working in now, saving time and all the, you know, the bells and whistles that go into what your manual processes might look like now, how we can take you to that next step. So moving forward, I'm going to be introducing it to Matt Rhodes very shortly. But as part of that, I wanted to let you guys know there's two upcoming events that are going to be on the radar. Uh, the first is the not-for-profit and Sage Intact Workshop. That's going to be happening on October 26th. And then you guys might be familiar with Bass Connect. We've hosted it this past summer. Uh, we're going to be doing another uh, Bass Connect, but a little bit different. It's going to be in the fall. We're going to be hosting it online during November 7th to the 23rd. So if there's anything that you guys are interested in, in terms of any of the modules that you guys might see or any of our third-party products, Quadiant, for instance, or one of our great partners, this is the time to come and see us. You'll see the marketing material come out in the next few weeks and months, and we'd happy to see you there. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Rhodes now, and he's going to walk you through AP Automation today. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm one of the account executives here at Quadiant, or, or maybe you've heard it as Sage AP Automation. I'll be your host for today. Uh, I'm an account executive, like I said, with Sage AP Automation. I'll be taking you through um, under the hood of our automation software later on in the set session and showing you how it can help optimize your AP workflows. There's going to be a Q&A at the end, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll address them when we get there. So let's get right into it. We're here to talk about the accounts payable pain points, holding your team back, the things that sometimes make AP a real P in the A. Our first pain point is a big one, manual data entry. So according to Level Research, 71% of companies point to manual data entry and related process inefficiencies as their top pain point. What that tells us is that manual data entry sucks and most people know it. But why is this such a pain point? Well, a lot of finance professionals are making important business decisions based on inaccurate financials. And according to Black Line Research, an incredible 41% of finance pros blame manual data entry for those dodgy numbers. Sage Research has shown that accountants spend up to 57% of their day entering data, leaving little room for anything else. And there's one final stat to hit you with. Despite all this, 86% of SMEs still enter their invoice data by hand. 
So manual data entry is a major problem and yet little is being done about it. So now that we've discussed the, the pain point of manual data entry that the majority of companies are facing, let's dive into the solution to see how we can solve for this. So on my screen, you'll see the, the Sage APA interface. Before we get into uh, how we're gonna re reduce the data entry, I'll introduce you to what you're looking at. So on the left-hand side, we have our four modules, expenses, purchase orders, invoices, and payments. At the top of the screen, we have our workflow tab. So everything's gonna start out from left and create in progress and flow right to the archive tab. Middle of the screen is the workspace or list view of invoices. And on the left, we have our filters and our org units. So this is gonna be a mirror of how organizations break out their org structure. Um, and our dummy account here, right, we've got Green Bean Co as our legal entity, then we break it out by division or department. So it comes in handy when we're talking about users. Uh, we allow for unlimited users in the system. Um, so that way, all the different players that are involved in AP can be in the tool with different permissions and restrictions. So getting into the actual data entry portion of things, there's typically two ways that, that companies are getting invoices in. Uh, most are getting them electronically via email, uh, and then we also have a handful that are getting uh, a lot via paper. So any of those invoices that come in via email, we'll set up auto forwarding rules, pull them into this in progress tab. And anything that comes in via paper, we can simply scan and in batches, upload, and then we'll use this as a quasi PDF editor to break out invoices either one by one or multiple pages. Once the invoice is in the tool, this is where the bulk of the data entry encoding is gonna be reduced. So for most accounting teams, when they're entering the invoice into their Sage 300, uh, they're typically entering the vendor, date, invoice number of totals, due dates, and taxes. In some cases, they might even be matching to a purchase order, the receivings, and then they're selecting the coding. We also have customers, right, who might have invoices with multiple line items, in some cases, even pages of line items. So for a typical full-time person uh, that I talk to every day, it might be five to 600 invoices per month that one FTE can, can manage. So let's say we have an individual spending I don't know, 20, 30 hours a week on data entry. I'll walk you through how we're gonna reduce that time down to just a couple hours a week. So instead of manually coding in vendor, date, invoice number, totals, due dates, taxes, all of that information from the header is gonna be already input for you. Then it's as simple as selecting the GL, which we're pulling from your stage 300 and submitting for approval. Now wait, there's a couple things that we can do even further to reduce the data entry. For any invoices that are recurring and typically coded the same way, for example, Cavallo technology typically is coded to 1080 computer software, we have the smart code feature at the top. This will basically instruct the system that any of those recurring invoices will be coded the same way so we can reduce the clicks even further. The next thing we can do is with line item capture. So for invoices that have multiple line items, you'll no longer have to go in, enter all the descriptions, you know, and potentially allocate to different GLs. We can actually take care of the line item capture for you, the line item entry for you. The last thing we can do to make the data entry go away from even further is just this PO adoption. So if your organization uses purchase orders, we'll import them from your Sage, and then we can adopt the line items from the PO straight to the invoice. So that takes care of uh, typically what's gonna be the, the bulk of the data entry. We'll hop back into the presentation. So the second pain point that we're gonna explore is the approval process. If you spent days knocking on doors and chasing for signatures, you're not alone. We surveyed over 280 professionals and found that they spend on average 20% of their time managing approvals. Add that to the time spent on manual data entry and we're up to 77%. We're practically running out of the day already. And complex approval processes gum up the works. It can take up to 45 days to process an invoice, pushing the average cost per invoice past $15. Delays in the approval process have knock-on effects too. Late payment fees, missed early payment, discounts, and damage vendor relationships are all potential consequences of approval roadblocks. So now I'll walk you through how Sage API automation can make the approval process a breeze. So there's basically two levels to the approvals. Uh, the first I'll show you is what an approver might be looking at. So let's say I'm a project manager. Uh, I need to look at all the invoices that are coded to my project um, or to my department. When I log into the system, all I might see is this approvals tab. I'm gonna see my pending invoices. I can either approve or reject in batches, or I can drill into the individual invoice. So 
an approver might actually be looking at this in the mobile app. That's probably a pretty common use case, right? So this will look a little different in the mobile app, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the invoice looks good to go. We're gonna hit thumbs up approve and we submit, uh, and that's that's the, the snap of approval. When we hit thumbs up, down reject, that's gonna indicate uh, an approval comment man be mandatory. So that way there's less back and forth when an invoice is pushed back. Now, if I'm someone in finance and I wanna see what's going on with all of my invoices that are pending approval, see where they're at, have the visibility over that data, these little thumbs up signs on the right will show me exactly where the invoice is and who it still needs to go to. So we'll hop into the back end now to show you how we actually build these channels. What to note is we can create these approval channels for any of these workflows. So I'm gonna make one for invoices, but we can also make one for payments, POs and expenses. So as I'm creating my channel, I can call, I can call this Matt's pool channel. We're gonna do all invoices related to investor relations. Um, and maybe I wanna have a threshold amount. So anything over $15,000 needs to have special approval. And then we can use any of these lists that we'll pull in from your Sage to build out the criteria for approvals. So typically customers mention that they wanna have approvals based off a of vendor, uh, potentially an org unit, and maybe even a GL, a GL code. So we'll use those three factors in this situation. And then we'll simply select which org unit, GLs, and so on, we want to route the invoice based off of. So once we have our criteria selected, anything about 15,000 that belongs to this org unit, to this GL, and maybe we'll add a vendor in here too, needs to go to the following folks. So right now we have it set up to go to Tom, our controller, but maybe we wanna have more controls in here, so we'll have Al Sally be our first point of contact, and then Jack, our CFO, be the final approval. In instances where we wanna have group approvals or maybe have um, multiple signing authority, we can simply drag and drop. So that's just one of the ways that we can address the approval process within Sage API Automation and reduce the emailing back and forth and lack of visibility around where approvals might be. All righty. So let's consider our third AP, AP pain point, a lack of data visibility and reliability. As it stands, finance executives are not confident in the accuracy of their cash flow data. According to Blackline, 49% have multiple issues with data accuracy, while an incredible 98% think that they could have more confidence in their data visibility. An Experian research uh, study has shown how business believe, businesses believe 32% of their data to be inaccurate, while 66% of finance employees think that their CEOs made bad, made business decisions based on incomplete or inaccurate data. Yikes. And finally, according to research from the University of Hawaii, an incredible 88% of spreadsheets contain inaccuracies, inaccuracies, so it's no wonder finance professionals aren't exactly happy with the state of their financial information. You might have noticed that we're back to where we started. Manual data is time consuming, inaccurate, and error prone, leading finance leaders to rely on bad financial information. It's the opposite of a virtuous cycle. So if none of the pain points we discussed have resonated with you, then you're probably in the minority of AP professionals. Most AP teams grapple with these same issues, and invariably it's because they're wedded to legacy manual processes. So we're gonna jump into our demo now and show you just how AP Automation can address each of these pain points and leave you with hours back in your day. So once we've coded the invoice, right, reduced that manual debt entry, we've taken care of the approvals, right, giving you that visibility over the actual workflows. Now we can get into reporting and the actual financial data that, that people really care about. So we'll hop into our archive tab, and this is gonna give you a historical record of all of your invoices. Sometimes you like to call it uh, your new shiny digital filing cabinet. So it's also where we can take advantage of these filters on the left. So even just yesterday, I talked to um, a controller who needs to run reports uh, for the last 13 weeks in terms of what's unpaid in an AP and potentially uh, narrow it down even further by vendor or by a project code. So in this example, we'll use a filter for the vendor ABC furniture. We can see we've already pulled up those invoices using, filter, uh, using vendor as a filter, but we also wanna see anything that is paid status of fully paid. And maybe we wanna narrow it down further by a GL code. 
So we'll use, I don't know, 1530. Let's search. And using these parameters, that's gonna bring up anything in the system that meets those criteria. We only have one invoice for that. So if we wanna create a report, we'll make it a little more interesting. Uh, we'll create a report of any invoices in the system from ABC Furniture that have been fully paid out. So we'll select the invoices we want to include and generate a PDF. You can see these are the criteria or, or the options we might want to include in a report. Um, you know, for in some cases, maybe an approval history isn't necessary, in other cases, it might be. And here's what the report will actually look like. So you're going to see a summary of your invoices that that belong to the vendor ABC Furniture, total of everything that's been paid out, the coding, dates, and then these hyperlinks will actually bring you to the invoice image. And we know our auditors really like to see this. You'll see an approval history of what exactly happened to that invoice along the journey. So. Typically from a reporting standpoint, right? I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of, of the filters you might wanna use, right? You wanna add in a PO or, or take a look at uh, things that are matched to expense or even, even specific line items. Um, that's gonna give you all the, the data visibility uh, that you might be missing in a, in a manual process. Alrighty. So now we'll discuss the integration to stage 300 and the other stage BRPs. So I don't pretend to be a mind reader, but I can tell what a lot of you are thinking right now, uh, which is that's all well and good, but adopting a new technology is a major disruption. So I think we've got time to address one bonus pain point here. So fears over the ease of the integration and data sync are a major roadblock in tech adoption. We've heard a dozen of times regarding AP automation, you know, how long until we're up and running, what's this going to look like for my IT team, am I going to lose a lot of data? Um, they're all reasonable concerns. So let's take a minute to see how Sage AP Automation solves this problem. So with Sage AP Automation, we use a simple sync tool to offer best-in-class integration. All your legal entities connect to the same sync tool via the server where your entities already are already hosted. You log in using your Sage credentials and with a single click perform either a full or partial sync with your Sage accounting software. And you can schedule sync a sync at multiple periods during the day to catch any updates and make sure no data is lost. Our customers have found that complete integration workflow, training and sync takes an average of just six hours. In a little over half a day, you'll be up and running, so disruption to your workflow is minimal. So I like to save the last and the most time consuming step uh, for last. Uh, so in terms of actually using this integration, uh, when we get invoices approved, they're gonna flow to the export tab. Uh, like I said, this is the most time consuming step. We're going to select the invoices we want to hit export, that we want to push to the Sage and hit export data. So that's it. That's the sync to Sage. All righty. Finally, let's take a look at how one of your peers has addressed these AP pain points with Sage AP automation. So the Canadian Safety Organization Ontario Trucking. Uh, association faced a, a number of AP pain points. Their AP process was entirely manual, and when we asked the VP of Finance, jo Joanne Banak, to list some of the ineffic inefficiencies that caused, she joked, how much time do you have? Adopting Sage AP automation has allowed Joanne and her team to automate their manual data entry processes, saving two members of staff two hours a day each. That's 20 extra hours per week to spend on higher value priorities. Joanne described their formal approval process as, we look at each invoice, manually stamp them, do the distribution, photocopy it, and then make sure that the approver actually sees it. So now all invoices are emailed and automatically scanned into the system for a simple two-stage approval process. Joanne has used Sage 300 for many years and wanted an AP automation solution that could integrate quickly and easily with her established ERP. I wanted to make it, she said, I wanted to make it as easy as possible for our team to adjust to a new, pro, new tool and process. Joanne tells us that Sage AP Automation, quote, works like a charm, a turnkey solution that allows her team to quickly get up and running without disrupting existing workflows. The OTS team are enjoying radically improved data access and visibility too. As Joanne tells us, all the information is there, invoices, payments, POs, they can verify everything. I just give them temporary access to Sage AP and they can review everything. 
So we'd love the, the chance to follow up with each and every one of you on pricing, implementation, and any questions specific to your company's workflow. As a first step though, please connect with your account manager at Bass as they have a full understanding of how to schedule you in for an in initial meeting with our team. Um, so thanks so much for taking uh, uh, part in today's session. Um, we're at the Q&A portion of our session now, so feel free to drop any questions in the chat if you haven't already, and uh, we'll get those, those answered. So right now, uh, the first question that has come in is, which payment methods are supported? Yep, um, so we like to joke everything but Bitcoin. Uh, basically, uh, we can do check, ACH, EFT, virtual credit card, or wired payments. Uh, next question that came in, what kind of customer support is included? Yeah, so uh, every, every uh, Quadian AP customer gets a dedicated account manager. Um, and the level of support uh, is basically dependent on how fast you want your support. So um, we do a tiered approach. We think of it like a fast, a fast pass uh, at Disney World. So um, every client gets guaranteed support within 16 hours. Uh, and of course, some organizations, they want to have a faster support. So we offer an eight, four, and two hour response time, uh, just depending on how fast, you know, if you have a question, uh, you want that addressed by your account manager. The last question we have here, how long does it take to get set up? Yeah, so um, typically it's going to be three uh, one-hour Zoom meetings. So for implementation, and, and I would say most clients, they space that out over the span of two weeks. So that first meeting is going to be integration. Where we're going to connect to your Sage, uh, your Sage 300, make sure we can pull in all your vendors, your GLs, lists, account codes. Um, second meeting is going to be workflows. We're going to build out the approval channels to take the manual processes and make them automated. And then the third meeting is training. So again, three one-hour Zoom sessions that are typically uh, scheduled over, over two weeks. We just had one more question that came in. Um, how do invoices get scanned? By who does this require us to hire someone to scan invoices? Yeah. Um, so. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there's basically three ways for us to get the invoices into your into your ER, into into our tool. If you have an AP inbox set up, we're going to set up auto forwarding rules on your inbox to pull the invoices in from your email. Uh, so anything that comes in digitally, you're not touching those invoices. We'll just pull them in automatically. I mean, of course, you can send them in if you want, but um, most people use the auto forwarding rules. For anything that's paper based, uh, it's probably similar to so like right now, most teams that are using a lot of paper invoices, they get them in, they might be scanning them in, emailing out for approval or storing them in a SharePoint or, or some sort of drive, right, to store them. Um, so instead of doing that, right, they would just, let's say, uh, upload a, a stack of 20 invoices. Scanner's going to spit out a 28-page PDF. We'll upload it here and then um, split those invoices out either one by one, right, or in... Uh, or in groups for anything that's multiple pages. So any sort of scanning that you would be doing now with paper invoices, instead of scanning it and saving it in a drive and potentially like naming each file or, or storing it in folders by vendor or month, um, we would do all that categorization for you. You would just, it'd just be the first initial scanning to the system, which is why, right, we want, uh, ideally, ideally most clients want uh, the majority of the invoices coming in via email as they can, because then it cuts out that initial step. And so we do have another question that I think you just answered, um, yeah. but how are the invoices scanned into the system? Um, yeah, I, maybe there's a confusion around it. So uh, the same way that you would scan an invoice to save it to your desktop or save it to a SharePoint file, you just put it in the scanner and upload the PDF, right? The other way you could do it would be to take a photo of the invoice with your phone, but most people, right, they're going to be uploading potentially a stack of invoices, so just with the, any office scanner. Okay, and we also have another question here. What cost do you charge for scanning? Um, we don't charge, there's not a charge for scanning. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the, the cost of the tool, right, is dependent on the, on the client and the volume, you know, and which modules are using, so that would be something to, to talk about in a demo, because it's going to be dependent on the, the actual client, but there's not a cost for charging uh, or for scanning per se, um, right? That's that's sort of like baked into the, the price of the tool, the process of actual invoices. 
right. Uh, I mean, maybe it means the OCR. Maybe they mean the scanning uh, is like the actual reading of the invoice. Potentially, they mean that. Um, and that's that's not like a separate charge. That's just baked into the, the cost of the software. So like when we use the OCR to read the invoice, so the vendor, the date, invoice number, all, all that scanning, right? Uh, that OCR, that's that's part of the, the cost of the tool. Perfect. Uh, we have a couple more questions coming in right now. Um, yep. So our PO, Saradex, is separate from Sage. Can this still be uh, merged? It, it probably depends on what you mean by separate from Sage. So the way that our, our system works is when we import purchase orders from Sage, uh, typically, the PO receiving process stays the same for the customer. They're creating the PO in Sage 300, um, and the receivings are tracked, inventory is tracked in Sage. And then we import all of your POs into the committed tab, and we'll match them to the invoice, and also pull in the receivings data. In this case, it sounds like your POs are done in a third-party system. Uh, and there's two ways we can handle it. If that third-party system talks to Sage, then we pull them in from Sage like we would if they were created in Sage. If that third-party system doesn't talk to Sage, um, either you would, uh, we would we would have to build an integration with that third-party system to pull them in, um, or they'd have to be, you know, manually transferred to Sage somehow. So it's it's really just dependent on if that third-party system talks to Sage or not. Um, but we do have the potential or the ability to to build integrations with other other tools like a third-party inventory system. Um, so it really just depends on on if that if that third party app talks to Sage or not. Perfect. Um, next question here: how, how accurate are fields populated from the scanned invoice? Example: supplier, invoice, number, amount, and so on. I think what they're referring to right is the actual data capture. So our data capture rate is ninety nine percent. The next question that we have here is, what security protocols does this solution support? Example, HIPAA compliance. Also, mm -hmm. where geographically is the data stored? Yeah, um, in terms of security, security protocols, uh, we are HIPAA compliant. We have our, our stock reports, um, similar requirements from like public traded companies. Uh, in terms of the data storage, it's going to be dependent on where the customer is geographically, geographically located. If, for example, they're in Canada, then they're stored, stored via Amazon Web Services on the cloud in Canada. If they're in the United States, then they're stored on AWS in the United States. Um, those are probably the, the two most common geographies that we, that we work with. Um, if it was a, a different country uh, than those, then uh, that would be uh, something to probably chat through one-on-one -on -one. Uh, but for, for Canada and US it's just in each respective country. Next question here uh, what is the cost of the tool slash program it may be cheaper to continue doing it ourselves the ancient way. <laughs> yeah um, yeah you might be right it, it could be cheaper to do it keep doing it the way you're, you're currently doing it if um, if you're at a certain volume right so if you got 10 invoices a month um, yeah it's probably cheaper to do it yourself. Um, the reason we asked that, that, that poll question about the volume is, is typically for most clients at the 50 to 75 invoice range is where uh, the ROI starts, ROI starts to turn around. And we can, we can do the math on it, right? So um, in terms of the value to the customer, this would look like how much time do we spend on data entry of the coding? How much time do we spend on approvals? And how much time do we spend on payments? So if we can quantify that, and and put the time back into accounting, what other higher priority tasks can we focus on? And we'll do this for every single client that we work with, whether they're doing 100 invoices a month or 20,000 invoices a month. Um, but yeah, it's possible if you have a really low volume of invoices, the, the cost won't be, um, the cost right might, might not be worth it. Uh, in terms of the pricing, uh, it's really gonna depend on each client. So th that's why it's hard to say like, is there like a sticker price for the tool? But I can tell you how it's broken out. So typically it's gonna be three components um, or, or two components rather. There's gonna be a um, the modules that you decide to use and then the, the invoice volume or the tier of invoices that you're pushing through the tool. So for example, some clients they only use invoices, uh, but we have other clients who use all four modules. So depending on that, um, 
right? That's going to affect the price. And then the second bit would be the number of invoices. If you're running 100 invoices through the month, through the invoice or through the through the tool, versus running, you know, a thousand invoices, uh, that's going to vary the price too. Next question here: What happens when a photo of a receipt is submitted but not legible? Would it require manual input? It really depends on the client. There are some clients that have, for example, invoices that have hand that are handwritten. So, for example, contractors maybe they they deal they work with, yeah, contractors, plumbers, right? Who who perhaps are submitting handwritten invoices. For those clients, we do have the option of of basically having human verification for for those particular cases. Uh, that's why in, in some cases, right, we, we can boast a, a 99% accuracy rate, whereas with you know the standard OCR might be like 75% um, for, for most automation tools uh, that, are, that are just using the OCR. So it really just depends on the client. If you if you if your organization deals a lot with that situation where things are um, in some like in, in, in the case of handwriting, right, need to be human verified, we can work with that. Of course, if it's completely illegible, then and a human can't even a human can read it, then <laughs> we'd have to go back to the source, right? Um, but you know, usually those are, are one offs. Um, so yeah, safe to say anything we can pretty much handle any kind of uh, any kind of invoice or receipt, even handwritten ones. Uh, yeah, if it was like missing data, then of course uh, we'd face the same problem that someone doing it manually would. Uh, another question regarding payment. Um, could you please let me know the cost for uh, setup purchase orders, invoices, and payment functions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you just, here, I'll kind of show this. If you want to just, um, either you can send an email here. Uh, I'm happy to, to uh, get, on, uh, get on a call with you and, and give you a quote. Um, or you can also reach out to Bass, right, and they can connect you with um, anyone here, right, and we can, we can work through getting you a an accurate quote. Perfect. Uh, last question so far. Um, when is the turnaround time for us to submit invoices to you and getting them backed scanned? Um, yeah, okay. So I think the question is around not necessarily scanning invoices, but around like the, the data capture. Uh, I think typically it's six hours. So uh, invoice comes into your AP inbox and it's going to show up as in this in progress tab. Typically, the turnaround time for the data capture is six hours. Of course, you'll still see the invoice, right? But in terms of the automation, that's usually the turnaround. I think that's what you mean by scanning. If you were talking about like paper scanning, then it's going to be immediate, right? As soon as you scan it in, it's going to show up in the tool. Perfect. Uh, that does conclude the question period. All righty. Awesome. Um, Dan or, or, or uh, Amanda, I'm not sure. Uh, anything else from you guys before we, uh, we sign off here? No, that's it, Matt. It's much appreciated. Thank you so much today for your time and thank you for everyone attending. All righty, cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, happy, to, happy to chat. Um, reach out either to the folks at Bass or, um, or myself. Perfect. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so this concludes our webinar for today. Thank you to all attendees for attending the Bass webinar on soothing your AP pain points in partnership with Quadient. All attendees will receive a copy of the webinar recording in a follow-up email. To help us improve on future webinars, we kindly ask all attendees to participate in our webinar survey attached in the webinar recording email. Again, we'd like to thank everyone again, and we hope you have an excellent day. Take care.